right, we are back with another episode of the RightSea Executive Interview Series. My name is Brandon Mitchell, co-founder and CEO here at RightSea. Um, and we are here uh, in Barcelona, Spain at RecBus 2024, um, and really here to highlight some of the amazing uh, people building for the future of the industry, especially as it relates to talent acquisition and HR tech. Um, we're really excited to be here with uh, Mac Pritchard, founder and CEO of MaxList. It's Mac uh, Pritchard. Mac, Mac Pritchard, um, founder and CEO of MaxList. Um, can you tell the audience just a little bit more about you know MaxList and uh, why you're here at RecBus? Well, MaxList is a regional job board. It serves employers and job seekers in Oregon and Washington State in the United States. And we've been in business since 2010. And one of the secrets of our success uh, is not only listening to our customers and the readers who use our site, but also looking for ways to improve uh, the work we do. And coming to RecBuzz gives us the opportunity to do that. It's a great opportunity to learn from other leaders in the online recruitment industry. And it's been a rewarding two days. I love that. And, and I think, uh, you know, again, being able to connect and to share information, especially with peers who may be, you know, behind you or a little bit more in front of you is always an amazing opportunity to soak up the, the content in the game and the things like that. Um, how'd you get started in, in the industry? We'd love to hear kind of some of the origin stories there. I'm an accidental job board operator, I, and I'm fa fairly along in my career, which has been in communications, largely in government, nonprofits, and politics. I actually ran a public relations company for 15 years and recently closed it after a successful run. And before that, worked for elected officials, government agencies, and nonprofits. But I had also had, in addition to a successful career, Brandon, two long periods of unemployment. Wow. And, and we all have had this experience. And uh, it happened to me twice. I cashed the last unemployment check once and came within one check of doing it a second time. Those experiences taught me the importance of networking, but most importantly, of being of service to my network. Uh, because good networkers not only ask for help, they, they give to others without any expectation of getting in anything in return. So my way of doing that was to share job postings, and I did that informally for almost a decade wow. until I found myself paying someone in my public relations agency to pay it, send out these postings. That's when I turned it into a business. And I ran both companies simultaneously for many years, and now I focus just on Max List. Our mission is to help, is to make hiring more human and help people find jobs that matter. We're very proud that uh, we are the first B Corp job board in the United States, and we think the second in the world. There's another great site in France that I think beat us by about a year. I love that, and I and I love the founder market fit, right? Like you being someone who ex had amazing careers, but also firsthand experience unemployment and what that was like, and probably the difficulties in finding a job, right? Um, especially in today's day and age, it's a really tight labor market. Um, employers are posting less. Um, revenues across most businesses are down, and so that definitely impacts the ability to hire because obviously most people hire when their business is doing really, really well. So I love that. You had that experience and you know what it felt like. So you were almost like your first customer in a sense, because at Maxis, you, you build for the employer to give them resources, but you also build for the job seeker as well. And so having that kind of duality, I think is really important that kind of shaped your perspectives on, um, on specifically what you all end up kind of doing. Um, so that's interesting. Can you talk a little bit about what a B Corp is? Because I think a lot of people are, I know what a C Corp is, I know what an LLC is, but can you tell the audience a little bit about a B Corp and why that means a lot to you? B Corp is a certified benefit corporation. It's a business that uh, manages for the triple bottom line, not just for profit, because we do manage for profit. Profit allows us to pay uh, above market wages to our employees and uh, invest in uh, things that make coming to work uh, uh, more rewarding and productive. But you also manage for community benefit and you would manage for environmental benefit. So to become a certified benefit corporation to you go through a certification process. Yeah. There's a global organization that, that takes you through that. And you do it every several years. And the benefit is to, uh, as a business owner, it helps us look at our business processes and improve them. And we are a more profitable, and I think, and I know a more successful business because we are a certified benefit corporation. Yeah, I love that. Um, and it gets, it kind of makes me think about the ethos right? Um, that intrinsically, it's not just about, you know, maximizing for profits, it's maximizing for the community, for the end users. And to be like a, 
not like a goodwill, but to have like good intention as built into the fabric of what you all do. Um, and I was gonna ask like, what makes you all different? And I think that's one of the key characteristics from just like a corporate formation perspective, but what makes you all different? I know that you only operate in about a few, few states. Um, what's you all's unique selling point? Is it localized, you know, candidates that are high quality? Is it a specific type of, 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 of a candidate? Can, can you talk a little bit about what makes Maxis a little bit different? Because we're a purpose-driven organization and it's central to our business, uh, we attract people who want to make a difference in the world and want to find work that matters. Now, candidly, Brandon, uh, we all want our jobs to have meaning and you don't have to sign up to work for a nonprofit or an international relief organization to do that. You, every job can have meaning and, and purpose. Uh, in, with our side, what makes us different is, uh, in addition to finding people who want to find meaning in their work, we focus on professional occupations in those two states and our top five verticals are nonprofits, healthcare, technology, uh, government, and marketing and communications. Love that. And uh, employers tell us that when uh, they post jobs on our site, uh, they get fewer applications, but they're the right applications. And one of the reasons that happens is because we've built an online community. People come not just for the job postings, but for lots of free information and valuable information about how to look for work and for employers, how to hire smarter. Uh, so we uh, publish a weekly career advice podcast, Find Your Dream Job, that focuses on the nuts and bolts of job search. We have two books out there, one about how to look for work wow. anywhere, one uh, about how to look for work in Portland, Oregon, where we're headquartered. Uh, there are hundreds of articles on our website about how to look for work and how to hire, as well as several free online courses uh, for uh, people who are interested in learning more about job search. We think that uh, learning job search skills and for our, our employers, learning how to hire smarter, when you do that, you're going to have better careers and you're going to have better candidates. And the candidates who apply through our site, because they've invested in learning their jobs in job search skills, uh, are going to uh, be a better match for our employers. Right. And it's going to save our employers time and money as well. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what, it, what it sounds like is you all have this amazing process of very high quality Maybe not the biggest volume, but it's quality. And I think in today's day and age with all the noise and you hear about all the AI buzz, and we'd love to get your perspective on that soon, um, it can create a lot of uh, false positives, but also just a lot of you know numbers and just people. But again, sifting through that is the key because a recruiter or a hiring manager, or obviously the employer, they don't want to spend a lot of time going through you know bad candidates per se. Just give me the good stuff, um, even if it's you know not the most, because I have confidence that the people that I do speak to will be worth my time. And I think that you have kind of crafted that amazing narrative. Um, and I would add, it's an old story, and I think it is familiar to one, anyone who works in the recruitment industry. Uh, if you're looking for good candidates, you tap into your community, your networks, right. and you rely on referrals and word of mouth. And what we've done at, at MaxList and what distinguishes us from the other great sites out there is that community that we've created both online and in person. Yeah, and how big is that community today? Because I know that you all have been running for quite some time and it started, probably started small, but how big is the community um, and um, are there ways for the community to interact amongst themselves as well? There are, so I, we get about 60,000 visitors a month to our website. We have three newsletters and the subscriber number varies from three to 7,000. Our open rates are very high because our, our readers are engaged. So our newsletters typically see open rates of 50 to 55%. Uh, we also have, a, uh, I mentioned our career advice podcast, Find Your Dream Job. It is nationally ranked on the Apple charts in the United States. Wow. Uh, you'll find it typically in the careers chart somewhere between 20 and 30. And it's been downloaded more than 4 million times. Uh, we have done in-person events in the past, and we're moving back to doing them again, and that gives people a chance to connect with each other. And uh, people also interact uh, through our social channels. Uh, online. We do yeah. a lot of online publication. And, and it seems like you all have just built a lot of amazing resources. And, you know, our, our mission is to care about your candidates here at Right C, and we believe in providing the job seeker with amazing resources, tools, coaches, et cetera, to be better at their job search so they're not spending as much time. So love that you all have invested so much in that. Can you talk about just the number one thing, you know, amongst all the resources that you guys 
offered today or the things that you've done that has been just maybe like the stickiest thing or something that you've, you've realized maybe when you did it, it was like, wow, we have to double down on that, whether it was the books or the courses or the blogs or maybe a specific marketing channel. Can you, can you talk about what has been like um, one of those things that you've seen and done that's just like we have to double down on this over the, over the last kind of few, few years? I think for uh, people who are running a, a job board, our weekly newsletter has been one of the best ways to keep people engaged uh, and to come to our site and provide our readers with valuable content. Uh, we've been doing that from the start. And when we launched it uh, way back in 2010, when we turned Max List into a business, uh, we saw a dramatic increase in visitors to our site and engagement uh, because People not only use the newsletter to look for jobs, but most of our readers are passive job seekers, right. more than 70% actually. And uh, they use the newsletter to see who's moving around in the community, and it reinforces uh, the community that uh, aspects of our site. I love that. Um, continue to put high quality information in front of people um, because you never know when somebody's looking for a job. And so they might be passive for a few uh, months or even a few years, but now you're number one because you have that consistency. You've built the brand reputation and you're showing up whether they need you right now or they'll need you in the future. And I think that that's how you build trust and longevity in your business is that you don't just do something once and you, and you put it down. You know, success is built over time by repetition. And I think that that's one of the key factors as to why you all have been so successful. So that is amazing. Um, that is an incredible story of how, you know, to kind of start and to have that ethos and to build. And so Mac, can you tell the audience how to find you if they'd love to contact you, whether it's to put jobs on your job board or to just learn a little bit more about some of the stuff that you've done? What would love to tell the audience? Well, please connect with me on LinkedIn. And when you do reach out, mention that you uh, saw me uh, in conversation with Brandon. And uh, I also encourage you to visit our website, maxlist.org, as well as listen to our podcast, Find Your Dream Job, which you can find wherever you uh, get your podcasts. I love that. Mac. Thank you so much for oh, taking the you're time. Welcome. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, kind of meet with us and to you know have your story highlighted. I mean, this is exactly why we do these executive interview series to really hone in and to shine a light on the incredible people building you know for the future of the industry and have done amazing things. So thank you so much, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.